Hey, this is Greg. What's up? Guess what day it is? It's Friday. And you know what that means. That means it's time for da 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 Uncut Friday. Yes, that's right. And on this channel, what we do is every Friday, I try to go off script, completely uncut, just free-forming it. And I talk about various topics that I think are of interest uh, maybe to the subscribers of this channel, to people who are new to the channel. Uh, but these topics might go off script, so to speak, in the sense that they might not, um, they might be a little off the general message of the channel, which is markets and investing. Okay. However, this particular topic does relate to investing. And that's why I thought it was uh, a good thing to talk about. And the topic for this week is Biden's gigantic bait and switch. Now, I want to say at the outset, this is not a political channel. This is a business channel and an investment channel. So normally I don't talk about politics, um, except to the extent that it's going to invet affect, so to speak, what we're doing on this channel, what the mission is of this channel, which is basically... Uh, talking about investments, following investments, making re recommendations, and uh, trying to make money uh, in in the stock market and real estate, whatever the case may be. So I feel that it's incumbent upon me to address some of the ridiculously bad policies that have been coming out of the Biden administration over the last month or so. And what particularly sparked this um, uh, this topic that I have today is uh, I <laughs> I tried very hard to watch his address to Congress uh, a day or so ago, and um, you know I couldn't force myself to watch it. Um, I started to get mildly nauseous, and since I didn't want to throw up all over the carpet, I told my wife you know what, I can't watch this. So we went on to watch some mindless garbage on television instead. But I got the gist of it, and I've been getting the gist of it. Of course, I follow it. And uh, I, I'm not going to go through the exhaustive list of all of the stupid things that he is proposing right now, which is right out of Bernie Sanders' playbook. But I'm just going to just give my general impression of what he's doing and, um, uh, you know, give my thoughts on it. OK. Now, I don't intend to, to uh, make this a, a statement on politics, so to speak. Uh, just a little background on me. I consider myself I'm not a hardcore Democrat or Republican. Um, some of my views are very liberal. Other views are very conservative, depending on what you're talking about. I consider myself a libertarian. I believe in small government. I believe in um, allowing people to pursue the American dream, so to speak, to the greatest extent that they can. Um, I believe in the Constitution. I believe in all the principles that founded this country, including free enterprise, uh, property rights. America has the the most robust property rights of any country in the world. And I think that capitalism and free enterprise is the reason why we are the greatest country and we have had the greatest prosperity of any country in the world. And all of those countries like Europe, for example, who have made forays into socialism have uh, made promises they couldn't keep and have enormous fiscal imbalances which long-term are not sustainable. Witness Italy and the pigs, we've talked about this on the on this channel, Portugal, Italy, um, uh, Ireland, uh, Spain, and these um, countries went heavily into socialism and basically currently they're economies cannot support their operating expenses, including their debt. And the uh, ECB is basically financing 
uh, those governments and facilitating those governments to be able to operate by artificially low interest rates. But we're not going to talk about that right now. So getting back to Biden, this guy ran <laughs> as being a moderate and being not Trump. Okay, I get it. Okay, a lot of people didn't like Trump personally. And, uh, you know, there were many people on the left that absolutely hated him and, you know, had uh, Trump derangement syndrome and it, and it became a thing. And I believe very strongly that if um, the pandemic didn't come in, giving Democrats an opening, Trump would have won re-election by a landslide because the economy was booming, the stock market was booming, unemployment was at an all-time low, the border was secure, um, minority uh, employment was at an all-time high, everybody was benefiting, the economy was lifting all boats at that point, okay? So, unfortunately for him, and who knows, maybe this was orchestrated by China because China wasn't a big fan of his, as you can understand why. Um, the pandemic comes in. Yeah, he made mistakes. He did certain things right. He did certain things wrong. He was, you know, a lot of people didn't like the way he managed the situation, whatever. The long and short of it was it gave Democrats an opening to take over the presidency. And, uh, you know, it was difficult. Everybody was pissed off. Um, people didn't like him uh, personally for various reasons. And it gave them an opening and they were successful at winning. But there was by far not a big mandate. You know, they have like six votes in the House. It's even in the Senate. So it's not like it was some big landslide where the Democrats have this huge mandate to, you know, implement all of their policies. But yet, realizing that they're going to get slammed in the midterm elections, they're using this time period to ram literally every wet dream, socialist, redistribution of wealth, um, anti-business, um, you know, policy that they can possibly imagine that was ever conceived by Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. I'm not going to include AOC in that because to me, she's she's still relatively irrelevant when it comes to uh, policies. But they are taking this opportunity as uh, a signal to ram through every single leftist proposal that Bernie Sanders ever dreamed of in his wildest dreams. Now, I don't understand why Joe Biden's doing this, because historically, Joe Biden has always been a center-left guy. You know, he's always been a moderate, a liberal moderate, okay? Let's put it that way. Why he feels he needs to do this, why he feels he should do this, I really don't understand it. You can say he's senile. You can say um, there are other people uh, like Susan Rice uh, controlling things. You can have all these theories. But the fact is, to the extent that he is a conscious, sentient being, <laughs> he is doing all these things and pushing all these things. And he has uh, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer um, pushing them too. Now... Again, the reason I mention this is not because of politics, because I know in a year and a half, they're going to get completely <laughs> devastated and this whole routine is going to come to a screeching halt. So I'm not that upset about it. But the question is, how much damage can they do in two years before they have their wings clipped? Okay. Um... What's going on now is a power grab. It is a policy boondoggle. And it is very negative for uh, business and investment, which is the subject of this channel.
Now, again, I'm not going to, on Uncut Friday, where I'm just freeballing it here, I'm not going to go through every policy uh, disaster that they're pushing. Um, I think that the, uh, the, the excessive pushing of social programs and uh, policy issues like the Green New Deal um, in the guise of infrastructure is ridiculous. Um, but a couple things I wanted to mention specifically are, is that relate to us here is the increase in the capital gains tax. Okay. He's proposing to go from 20% to 39, basically 40%. Okay. When you tack on many states, particularly blue states that have capital gains tax themselves, um, you're talking maybe mid forties in terms of taxing capital gains. Okay. This is a horrible idea. Um, it inhibits investment. Um, that money was already taxed. Okay. It's the, it, for the most part, it's after tax dollars. It makes no sense and it's going to hurt the stock market if implemented. And it's going to, um, you know, inhibit people from taking risk and investing in businesses because, you know, um, many times this is risk capital and this is, uh, it's not the same as making a salary or getting paid an hourly rate wage. It's not the, it's not the same. Okay. It's investment capital. It's taxing investment capital. Another extremely insidious and counterproductive and just vicious thing that is in this bill that they're pushing is removing the step up in, uh, in estates. And what that is, is when let's say your family owns a farm and your parents die and they're leaving it to you uh, or a business or whatever it might be under current law, the basis steps up to the value at time of death. And that's the, that's the basis that you inherit as an heir. What Biden's proposal is, is that they eliminate that and it goes back to your parents' basis. So the effect of that is, is that when you finally go to sell it, you're going to get taxed on their basis, not on the step-up basis that you inherited it at. I mean, this is just, talk about a bad idea. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. And the list goes on and on and on. So why is Biden doing this? Why is he basically adopting Bernie Sanders' platform and Bernie Sanders' idea, even as he ran as an alternative to Bernie Sanders? Um, the only thing I can come up with to explain this is that um, they, they, the Democratic Party sees this as an opportunity for a power grab, and they also see it as uh, an opportunity to um, do as much, you know, be a, uh, push through as many things as possible before the inevitable, inevitably they get wiped out at the midterm elections. Okay, but historically, and I've been watching this for a long time, okay, I go back to Clinton and and even before that, Reagan, and it happened to Clinton after the first two years of nonsense, he got, he was a lame duck for the remaining six years of his presidency. It happened to Obama. Obama got Obamacare through. The midterms completely eviscerated him. He was a lame duck for the remaining six years. And it's going to happen to Biden. And, uh, you know, the Democrats don't seem to understand that they're opening up the ability for an extreme backlash against all this stuff. And what's going to happen is uh, they're going to open up uh, the opportunity for either Trump to run again or for someone else who Trump is backing who will be a complete 180 on all of their plans and will basically dismantle everything that Biden's done with executive actions. You know, so it's become a crazy uh, political situation that uh, it would be amusing to watch if it didn't affect us so uh, 
uh, intensely to the extent that, you know, we're trying to invest money, we're trying to take care of our families, we're trying to, um, you know, uh, get through life and avoid taxes and uh, and have something at the end that our, our, our kids can inherit. And it seems like this government is doing everything it possibly can to punish people who have been successful. Uh, it's very punitive against wealth. And um, it's very negative toward America and all of the things that America stands for that we love so much in this country. All right, so I hope you got some value out of this. Um, again, I didn't make it uh, intend to make it political. These policies are very negative toward business and investment. And so from that standpoint, uh, they affect what we're doing here, which is talking about markets, talking about investing, talking about business and trying to make a living here and trying to make money for ourselves and to create a better future for ourselves and our family. Okay? So anyway, that's Uncut Friday for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Please subscribe and like. And I'll see you next week and have a great weekend. And there'll be more videos coming your way very soon. So please stay tuned.